today on Locked on A's. The A's made another signing. They got Trevor May, a, a legitimate reliever to add to their relief core. So we're going to talk about him and uh, what he's going to be bringing to the A's in 2023. And then with the addition of Estuary Ruiz, uh, there's been talk that Pache might be on the trade block and that's insane. I'm going to go over why that's insane and uh, how the A's could go about playing him because he's out of options uh, and still get like production out of him. So we're going to go over that. And then we're going to talk about Estuary Ruiz because Fangraphs has projections on him according to Steamer and uh, they're intriguing. I think that I would take these projections in his first full big league season. We're going to talk about all those things and more on today's episode of Locked on A's. Let's get into it. How's it going, A's fans? And welcome to episode 508 of the Locked on A's podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, noted baseball fan, Jason Burke. And on today's show, we're talking Trevor May. We're talking Christian Pache. We're talking Estuary Ruiz. And uh, we're going to have some fun today. It's Friday. Why not? Have some fun. Love fun on Fridays. Uh, and then also, um, we're gonna we're just gonna, you know, talk about the A's, have some fun, uh, and get into get into everything. So that's what we got coming up for you guys today. Before we get into anything, though, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online uh, has you covered the season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. So if, if you wanna go start the game. Bet online is where you go. Also, thank you guys so much for making Lockdown A's your first listen of the day. We are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where you guys are doing great with the comments. We're getting like 10, 15 comments an episode. That's wonderful. Keep them coming. If you don't know what to write, just say, wow, so good at baseball, so handsome. That's all you got to write. People have written that, and it's really made my day. I show my wife every time. It's wonderful. So if you want me to show my wife what you write, that there you go. That's the template. So good at baseball. So handsome. Send. Uh, and by commenting and liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel, you help it grow uh, with the the weird YouTube algorithm. Algorithm. It finds other A's fans like you that would like content like this, and uh, it, it helps us uh, reach more people. So please and thank you. Uh, also, make sure to follow us on social media at Locked on A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter. Uh, check out Inside the A's. It is a new site that, that I'm running in affiliation with Sports Illustrated. Uh, it's more A's news, insight, and analysis is coming your way each and every day from Inside the A's. Check it out uh, InsideTheA's.com. Also, Inside the A's on Twitter and on Facebook. But let's get into this Trevor May signing. He seems like fun. I like him. Uh, he's already really, uh, he, he, he had a tweet already uh, talking about playing E40 uh, at the Coliseum. Gotta love that as an Oakland person. And then uh, also he had his pinned tweet. It's just him giving up home runs, <laughs> like 31 home runs over the course of his nine year career. Um, I think it's hilarious. And it was like to, like a TikTok uh, song too. So that was it was really well done, and he's got the right personality, I think, for this team, and, you know, for, for my taste, at least. So, Trevor May, welcome to Oakland. Love it. Let's talk about what what he's bringing to the A's, though. He is a right-handed pitcher entering his age 33 season. He throws 96 on average. Love it. I love the 96. He also has great extension to it. It's like 91st percentile, I want to say. Um Based off of memory, sorry. I, I wrote about it at Inside the A's. If you guys want that specific number, InsideTheA's.com. Uh, but yeah, great extension. So it gets up on guys a little bit faster. Um, the contract is $7 million for 2023. It's a one-year deal. It also has a $1 million signing bonus and $500,000 in performance bonuses. That's according, to, the contract details are according to Jeff Passan of ESPN. So not a bad deal. Not a bad deal for him. Not a bad deal for the A's. I like it. And it's also like a bounce back uh, contract, too, because he wasn't great last year. But since he became a reliever full time in 2018, he was, he started some games, like 16 games in 2016. Since he's become a reliever in 2018, he has been very, very good. He's split that time between the Twins and the Mets. But uh, combined, he has a 354 ERA in 202 thirds innings pitched uh, in those in how, five seasons. That's what he's thrown. Uh, he also has a 120 ERA plus, which means he's been 20% above league average, and a 366 FIP. So his FIP and his ERA are right in line, which means he's that 
that's the pitcher he is. He's roughly a three and a half ERA guy over the course of time. Not a bad deal. But since the A's only have him for one year, uh, you could go in one of two different directions. Oh, also, uh, his, his his whip and stuff. Uh, he had a, a 1181 whip, 11.9 Ks per nine, 3.2 walks per nine. All great stats. Love the stats. In 2019, uh, with, I believe, he, he was working, I, I believe, with A's new bullpen coach, Mike McCarthy. Uh, he was, McCarthy was in the minors, but... They had to have crossed paths, right? Or you could have, like, sent him an email like, hey, it's me from the minors. Uh, maybe do this. Uh, because 2019 ha- has been, according to ERA and a bunch of other stats, uh, it-, it has been Trevor May's best season in the big leagues. And you got to think Trevor or uh, Mike McCarthy may have had something to do with that because he also turned around Tyler Duffy that season. So I- I'm just saying hey, maybe they're reunited and they can rekindle some of this 2019 magic. And that's why I'm intrigued by this signing. Maybe they didn't even, maybe they don't know each other. I don't know, but I'm going to say they do. And I'm very intrigued by it. So in 2019, he had a 294 ERA in 64 and a third innings pitch. And then a 1073 whip. That's very, very good all the way around. I love all those numbers. In 2022, you know, this past season with the Mets, he had a 504 ERA in 25 innings pitch with a 1440 whip. Uh, those numbers aren't great, uh, as, as you can tell by the numbers. But also, uh, he tried to pitch through a triceps early, uh, a triceps injury a little bit earlier in the season. He had like an eight ERA at some point. And so he whittled it down in, you know, the innings that he had available to him. And uh, he missed a bunch of time with injury. So that... The, year, the five ERA, not necessarily concerned. Injuries. Injuries. And now he's going to be healthy. He's going to be reunited, question mark, with Mike McCarthy. And uh, he's going to go back to 2019 numbers. He's going to have a sub three ERA as the eighth inning guy, I think. I think he fits in in the eighth inning uh, for the A's. And then they could have uh, Danny Menez or A.J. Puck if he doesn't make the rotation. Or uh, uh, you could go Zach Jackson as well. They got three guys that could close games maybe um they're not like necessarily like slam dunk guys and they're not veteran presences necessarily but i think that uh trevor may is better as as a guy that holds games not saves games uh in 2019 when he was dominating the world uh he he went two for four in saves so there's that Uh, he also had like 17 holds so it was good um he also uh later found out last year that he had a, a stress reaction in his throwing arm so that, that that would uh, lead to a 5 ERA. I, I'm impressed that he still only had a 5 ERA. It should have been so much higher with all of those injuries. Um, so I'm intrigued by this signing. I like him as a fit uh, personality-wise with this team. He's going to be a nice veteran presence on a very, very young team. Um, and then also to, to make room for Trevor May, the A's had to make a move from somewhere else on the roster, and that left Cody Thomas getting DFA'd. Cody Thomas is an outfielder. He's 28 years old. I he I don't believe, has he? I think he made it to the majors very, very briefly. Um, but injuries have been the big story of his career so far. Um, he had 18 home runs in 59 games in the PCL in, 20, in 2021. And uh, everybody was like, holy crap, this guy. If he can stay healthy, the A's got an outfielder here. He was acquired in the Sheldon Noisy slash uh, Adam Kalarik deal. And uh, he, he's he been hurt a lot. I think he played like 16 games last year. Uh, six of those were in rookie ball. Ten of those were in AAA. So not a lot of playing time necessarily the last couple of years. But hopefully because of those injuries, he can stay in the A system and the A's can get one more crack at trying to get him into the big leagues and into a regular rotation. But uh, if they miss out on him, you know, it, it's an injury thing. So that kind of stinks. And, you know, best of luck to Cody Thomas wherever he lands because uh, we don't wish for people to get injured and we want everybody to make lots of money and uh, do do the things that they like. So good luck to Cody Com- uh, Good luck to Cody Thomas. Those are the words. And uh, very excited about Trevor May coming on board. But coming up next for Locked On A's, we're going to be talking about Christian Pache and why the A's shouldn't trade him. That's ridiculous. That's nonsense. But first, we're going to talk about Built Bar because Built Bar is delicious. Uh, can, can we pause this pod for a second? 
Okay, we're paused. Great, because you gotta try this. I'm talking about Built Bar's new reimagined flavors, cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, and coconut brownie topper. White peppermint granola. It's built to take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie, puff. These are puffs that you do not pass. It's puff, puff, chew with Built Bar puffs. Uh, they are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. First off, for anyone who has not tried Built Bars before, they are literally the best tasting protein bars ever built. No, they're legitimately delicious and the puffs are so, so good. They send us boxes every now and then. I don't care which flavors they send me. They're all delicious. Get a grab bag. If you like lemon, go for lemon. I don't care. But whichever bars you get, they're going to be absolutely fantastic. You just sink your teeth into that first bite and it'll change your life forever. So you got to try these things. All you got to do, get 15% off of your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at built.com. Just go to built.com, type in LOCKEDON15, you get 15% off and your life will be changed forever. Welcome back to the Locked On A's podcast. If you guys are enjoying the show, make sure to subscribe wherever you like to hear podcasts. Follow us on social media at Locked On A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter. Check out Inside the A's on both Twitter and on Facebook so you never miss an article over there. And uh, yeah, also check out the YouTube page. It's growing. It's at 605 or 606 subscribers. It keeps going back and forth. It. I think it's one person just messing with me. At least that's what I hope. <laughs> uh, I, I'm reaching a new audience and then immediately losing that new audience. I don't know. One of those two. Um, but yeah, check it out. Uh, if you haven't commented already and you're still watching, so so good at baseball, so handsome. There you go. Easy. Uh, but let's get into Christian Pache and why the A's should not trade him. Uh, the big the big thing with Christian Pache, uh, one, he wasn't very good in 2021. <laughs> so I guess there's that. Uh, but that's beside the point. We'll get into that. Uh, he's out of options. That's that's why this is coming up. He's out of options. He cannot be sent back to the minor leagues without being placed on waivers first. And you would have to imagine that a team in baseball would take a chance on Christian Pache. Basically, any team would be like, yeah, we'll give him a shot. Screw it. Why not? I think that a lot of, like, even contending teams would do what I'm going to tell the A's to do now. So, uh, that I, I think that the A's should hold on to him because he's... He, he could be really good if he can figure out, you know, just hitting. If he can figure out hitting, it'd be great. But uh, after the Sean Murphy trade, David Forrest was talking to the media, and and the reporters asked about Estuary Ruiz. And they, they basically asked, I think it was Kawahara, asked uh, if Pache is on the trade block now that Ruiz is in tow because Pache is out of options and Ruiz has two options. And so uh, does this open up the possibility that Pache could be traded. And uh, I, one, I, I say no, but David Force said, this is going to be a very important spring for him, which is not a no. And that worries me a little bit. So I'm going to come to Christian Pache's defense because, um, as, as I've told you before, the front office definitely listens to this because they do most of the things I do, not the people that I want, but they, they did not listen to me on the Sean Murphy trade at all. But uh, oh, some of the other things, I'm like, hey, I talked about that yesterday, and now they did it. That's wild. Um, so, how's it going, David? Uh, don't, don't trade Christian, please. Uh, but let's talk about his season. He played 91 games with the Oakland A's in 2021. Uh, he, he also played Las Vegas as well. Not the Las Vegas A's. Haters. Las Vegas Aviators, the East AAA affiliate. <laughs> uh, but he, he did it. He wasn't great. Let's say that. He was not great. He had like a 30 WRT plus. Not great. 70% below league average. But those are still improved numbers over what he did in 2021. So there's progress. And that's important. Uh, also, why, why would they trade him? His value is literally zero on baseballtradevalues.com. Uh, great, great website. It's a tool, not gospel. Let's be clear. Tool, not gospel but he has zero trade value. So uh, why would you trade him? And if you're just going to put him on waivers and get literally nothing for him, that's dumb too. So figure out a way to get him some playing time and get him figured out. That's my plan. Um, in, in 2022 overall, he hit 
Uh, he had 260 plate appearances, hit 166 with a 218 on base. Those are bad numbers. He had a 35 WRC plus all the way around. Not great numbers. I understand that. But against left-handed pitchers, it gets slightly better. It gets a lot better, actually. Uh, he had 88, 89 plate appearances. He hit 220 against lefties with a 281 on base and a 77 WRC plus. Again, it's still well, well below league average, 23% below league average. But the A's had an entire position, like third base, that was worse than that all of the last year. So uh, Christian Pache, who can at least play the hell out of center field, you got to keep him around and hope that the bat comes around. Work like the Dickens to fix that bat. G get Kevin Crone and uh, God, Tommy Average. Get both those guys and just... Give them a lot of coffee and just keep throwing pitches to Christian Pache. That's all you got to do. Um, so I, basically, at the very worst, he's a fourth outfielder. They can play amazing defense. You've seen contending like teams getting into contention that have guys like this. Jake Marisnik on the Astros was kind I mean, he might not have been this bad offensively, but kind of this guy. Kind of this guy. Miles Straw for uh, Cleveland this past season. Not great offensively, also a former Houston Astros prospect. Uh, not not great offensively. Played the crap out of center field. Trent Grisham kept his center field job in 2022 because he played the crap out of center field. None of these guys were particularly like great offensively. They were better than Pache overall, but not better than Pache against lefties. So there's that. Uh, also, Chad Pinder uh, wasn't great. Overall, he had like an 83 WRC plus overall, I think. So uh, I think you can make some room for Christian Pache and hope that he figures it out. And then you can play him against righties in the future or, you know, second half of the season or something like that. Christian Pache needs to be on this team the, the entirety of 2023. I mean, he needs to be because he's out of options. So there's that. But you got to give him some run. You, you, you have to give him something because you can't trade him just yet. You can trade them after the offseason. If it doesn't work out after two seasons, sure, cut your losses, I guess. But when they acquired him, they knew that he was a work in progress. And if they didn't know that, then that's on them. That's not on Christian Pache. He was obviously a big work in progress. He had not done it at the major league level yet. You don't trade for that guy. You don't just like, yeah, sure, we'll take him. Oh, no, because he's probably the, the second biggest piece in that deal. A lot of people like to say that he was the centerpiece. Shea Langoliers was the centerpiece, which allowed them to then also trade Sean Murphy to the Braves. So that was fun. Stupid Braves playing like chess while the A's are playing checkers. I don't like it. Back out. I don't know what the A's are playing. Old Maid, they were playing a bad game. Anyways, I think that you got to you gotta give Christian Pache some run here. At least play him against lefties. And then, you know, you, you could platoon him with some other position. I don't care. You, you could platoon him in right if you want to. Because you want to give Estuary uh, Ruiz uh, playing time. You want to have him... You want to give him the room to grow and learn center field. I get that. Every now and then he's going to need a day off. Or... You know, maybe Pache can just play against lefties, which is still like a 60-40 platoon split. It's not like he's playing all the time, but he's still getting experience out there. The two of them combined might be really, really good. We'll see. Uh, but I think that Ramon uh, was a little bit better against righties than lefties. So uh, you could do that platoon as well if you want to get the best out of both. I don't know. But you got to play Christian Pache. You got to play him. That's all I'm saying. Anyways, coming up, we're talking about Asturi Perez. Uh, why do I keep wanting to say Perez? Asturi Ruiz. I think it's because it's easier to say than Ruiz after Asturi. Uh, anyways, we're going to talk about Asturi Ruiz coming up and the projections that Fangraphs has for him in 2023 because they're pretty good. I'm intrigued by this. We're going to talk about it. Come get intrigued with me. You're hanging out with some friends, putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling for a ride. Nah, you live nearby. You can make it home. It's no big deal. What's the what, what are the odds that you get pulled over anyway? And even so, what's the worst that could happen? Your insurance goes up. You lose your license. You lose your job. You total your car. You kill someone. Everyone knows the risks about driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. 
However, that still doesn't stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officers are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads to save lives. So, if you think that you're okay to drive after a few drinks, think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Welcome back to the Locked On Ace Podcast. If you guys are enjoying the show and you've made it this far, please subscribe to the podcast and also leave us a five-star review on your platform of choice. If that platform is YouTube, just subscribe, comment below. So good at baseball, so handsome. But uh, also make sure to follow us on social media at Locked On A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at by Jason B on Twitter. And uh, check out Inside the A's for more A's news insight and analysis from this guy. But let's talk a little bit about the Estruri Ruiz fan graph projections because uh, they're, they're decent. I'm intrigued. They're not quite his AAA stats from last year, but they're good. I, I like them. Uh, they, they have him batting 243, which, I mean... Not great, but it's okay. That's for a first year as a 20, I think it'll be 24 next year. Uh, as a 24 year old, that's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, also, he'd have a 321 on base, nine home runs, 29 stolen bases, a 110 WRC plus. That is the number that I'm looking for right there. 110 WRC plus, 10% above league average. Uh, I believe Sean Murphy had like a 123. So not that much worse than Sean Murphy, the guy that he was traded for. Uh, if that projection comes true, I will really, uh, I'll be very happy about what he could in fact become throughout the course of this contract um, or, or, you know, his time with the A's before whatever happens, happens. But so I, I like those projections. I also want to call out a little bit of attention to uh, his AAA numbers compared to another player's AAA numbers in the same league so that you can kind of get a sense of what maybe to expect at the big league level and why that 110 kind of makes a little bit of sense. Uh, the guy that I'm talking about here is Jake McCarthy, who was 24 years old last year in AAA. In 165 plate appearances, he had an 11.5% uh, walk rate. 13.3% strikeout rate. He hit 369 with a 457 on base. That was good for a 165 WRC plus. 65% above PCL league, or I guess PC league average. <laughs> so very, very solid numbers from Jake McCarthy of the Arizona Diamondbacks. One of the, the guys that they're looking to trade right now. And I don't know that they're going to be getting Sean Murphy for Jake McCarthy, but... Uh, hey, good luck with that. Um, then you got Estuary Ruiz. He was 23 years old in the PCL last year. 142 plate appearances. This is with uh, the San Diego Padres. They, because he would, was he was with two different teams in the same league. He was two different people for some reason. So I went with the one that had the most and the one that was better slightly. <laughs> um, so just to compare the two of them, his batting averages that they were basically the same stats all the way around. It doesn't matter. But with the Padres, uh, he had 142 plate appearances, a 14.1% walk rate, 17.6 strikeouts. So that is uh, three, not roughly 3% uh, higher in walks than Jake McCarthy, 4% higher in strikeouts than Jake McCarthy. So a little bit more swing and miss, a lot more walks. I like that. I'll take anything under 20. I will take increase that walk rate. I like it. Uh, and then he hit 315. So well below Jake McCarthy right there, but they had the same on base percentage at 457. So really that's, that's got A's written all over right there. Uh, money ball back in full force. And then he was all, he also had a 145 WRC plus that's 20 points below Jake McCarthy, but still roughly similar playing time, roughly similar results. So what did Jake McCarthy do when he got to the big leagues in Arizona? He played 99 games. He had 354 plate appearances. He wasn't good defensively. We talked about this when I was talking about trading for him. Not great defensively, but he had a good bat. He also had a, uh, he hit 283 with a 342 on base, a 116 WRC plus. So yeah, they're comparing them. I mean, they're staying in line with one another. Uh, according to the projections and all that stuff. So I'm intrigued by Ruiz actually being able to handle the big league level 
over the course of a full season, as opposed to like the 17 at bats that we're basing everything off of right now. 17, it wasn't a lot of plate appearances for him uh, when, when he made it to the majors in 2022 when he hit like 171. So um, I, I think that the, the ceiling is a little bit higher than the initial take in the big leagues would have you believe. Um, I, I think that he has more upside than Christian Pache with the bat. So there's that. Uh, the defense is what we're going to be keeping an eye on. I think the bat should be able to develop. We're going to see how that glove goes. He's fast as hell. And I want to watch him run some bases. Uh, but I got a couple of other things here. Uh, according to the projection, and I know the projection is just a projection. It hasn't actually happened. But I got a couple of names that I want to throw out at you guys. Uh, number one is Andrew Vaughn. Because... Andrew Vaughn was a big talking point uh, during the trade Murphy trade discussions with the White Sox. Uh, you know, when the White Sox were mentioned as a team and they were like, well, obviously Andrew Vaughn would be the guy that coming back because the A's like Andrew Vaughn. Well, in 2022, he had a 113 WRC plus that 3% difference between the Ruiz projection and the Andrew Vaughn, what he did. So I'm not saying that he's going to have the 110 WRC plus. I'm saying they might get the same production that they would have gotten for Andrew Vaughn. It's just a different name, played a different position, and he's probably going to be better in the uh, defensively as well. So there's that. So the A's may have gotten an Andrew Vaughn type as their centerpiece. And if that's the case, do you feel a lot better about this trade? I think I do. He has more speed, a little bit less pop, maybe, but a lot more speed. That Andrew Vaughn, much better defender. You can't be uh, worse than the worst defender in baseball. So that might have been actually Juan Soto. But Andrew Vaughn was down there for sure. Also, Ronald Acuna Jr., down season, he had a 114 WRC+. So I'm just saying, Ruiz could be the next Ronald Acuna Jr. That's, that's all I'm saying. Just big declarations here in a down season. <laughs> uh, one other thing. I believe that uh, I, I tweeted this, I think, but uh, I, I haven't actually, I didn't write it down here, but Alex Verdugo, who was the number 35 prospect in baseball before uh, he made his big league debut, played some time with the Dodgers, and then was traded as the centerpiece of the Mookie Betts deal. Mookie Betts was entering his final, final year of you know team control and all that stuff. I know that there, there was less team control, but I would argue he's a better player than Sean Murphy by a little bit. Uh, Alex Verdugo was the centerpiece of that trade. He had a 103 WRC plus last year. So if the A's get a 110 out of Ruiz in his first year, and hopefully that either stays the same or goes up, the A's may have done better than the Red Sox did for literally Mookie Betts. We'll see. We'll see. Also, the, the Red Sox DFA Jeter Downs. Do you want them? I don't know. Uh, and... Quick little thing, uh, the Red Sox also DFA'd Eric Hosmer, and based on principle, I don't want Eric Hosmer. Um, but if you if you do, and you're an A's fan, um, that, that's fine. I mean, he would be an upgrade at first base, arguably. Um, you could platoon him with Ryan Noda, maybe? I don't know. But Ryan Noda doesn't really have, like, discernible splits. Uh, so I don't know that there's necessarily a fit for Eric Hosmer, who would be making league minimum... Because so, the Padres are paying him three and thirty nine over the next three years, and that is wild. Uh, so you can get him for free if you want Eric Hosmer. Um, but do 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 you? I I don't think you do because you got Ryan Noda. You want to give him playing time. You want to see what he can do at the big league level. He's already twenty seven years old. You want to see what he can do. Then you got Dermis Garcia. If he cuts down on the strikeout rate, you can play him at first base. Also, Tyler Soderstrom, the, the number one prospect for the A's like number 30-something in baseball, uh, he is going to be in AAA and probably, uh, sh I mean, should be getting a call-up by some point in 2023. So you don't want to block him with Eric Hosmer. <laughs> Noted Eric Hosmer, Eric Hosmer. So, yeah, I don't think that he's a good fit. Even for a 102-loss 2022 Oakland A's, I don't think that he's a fit. So uh, good luck to Eric Cosmer on everything. And uh, I still haven't forgotten about 2014. So there's that. <laughs> but that is all that I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for making the Lockdown A's your first lesson. For your next lesson, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, of the day plus instant reaction, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get podcasts. So wherever you're listening to this, go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. It's fantastic. Peter Bukowski, 
I'm not going to say he's more handsome than me, but he's a good looking guy. From a handsome guy to a handsome guy, he's doing okay. So there's that. Uh, next week, we got our Festivus episode. Uh, I, I have two people at least on that show uh, joining me. So we'll get, we're going to we're gonna have some, some fun. Also, uh, Bryce Patterick is going to be bawling his eyes out because Joey Gallo signed with the Twins. And I am, I mean, he's not with the A's, so that stinks. But he's not on the Rangers either, and that's going to make me happy. So uh, we're going to dunk on Bryce Patterick a whole bunch. We're recording that one actually tomorrow. It'll be released next Friday. So so you don't miss it or forget about it or anything, you got to make sure to subscribe to the podcast wherever you like to hear podcasts. Check out the YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe over there. Like, comment. So good at baseball. So handsome. Also, uh, follow us on social media at Locked on A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm a by Jason B on Twitter. Check it out inside the A's for more A's news, insight, and analysis. Uh, it's coming your way every single day. It's at inside the A's on Twitter and on Facebook. But that's all that I got for you guys today and this week. So, until next time, go out and celebrate good times, Ace fans. I'll talk to you guys on Monday.